Hi, my name is Nacho, welcome back to our channel. And the internet was set ablaze recently with the announcement of yet another Star Wars movie, again starring Daisy Ridley as the very popular Ray Palpatine, I mean Skywalker. But this time it's different because we got a female director of color. We gotta make sure we get that diversity in there. No, not her. Who's taking the lead in the project with one very solid objective in mind to destroy the world of men. Charmin Obeid Chinoy, a Pakistani-Canadian journalist, feminist, activist, filmmaker. Jesus Christ! <sighs> it's gonna be the one directing the upcoming film, Star Wars The New Jedi Order, a movie that takes place 15 years after the events of The Rise of Skywalker, where Rey is, pretty obviously, rebuilding the Jedi Order. Which I found out, because I'm not a complete devotee to Star Wars lore, is the title of another set of stories, where a multitude of writers and artists contribute to tell the story based around the alien race I'm not even gonna attempt that who begin a massive invasion of the galaxy and quickly gain ground despite efforts at repulsion made by the New Republic and Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order Wait... Luke is the leader of the New Jedi Order? Huh, interesting Why can't we have that instead? But I digress, Charmin said in an interview that it's 2024 and it's finally time to have a woman come forward to shape the story in a galaxy far far away. Fair enough, it's not like that's been the norm for the past 10 years, but what really got the fandom heated is a clip that resurfaced from an old interview of hers where she says this. I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> Dear God. A woman of color directing a female-led movie says that she enjoys making men feel uncomfortable and is now in a franchise where the vast majority of the fans are men. Hmm, where have I heard that before? But the media came forward to own the chats coming after Charmin, saying that that is a quote taken out of context from an interview that happened 8 years ago. Okay, fair, she said that before ever being involved with Star Wars. But listen to what she says next. That I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable and it should make you uncomfortable because you need to change your attitude that you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like the reflection and then say maybe there is something wrong with the way I think. Again context is important but it's the way she said it that didn't prevent a bunch of Star Wars fans from seeing that clip and basically said you need to fuck off. Escapism is a thing. Some do it with movies, others with shows, Others do it with figurines, but it's an important thing in current times where the circumstances of living are getting progressively harder to deal with, where the division amongst people is getting bigger by the minute and sometimes it's the only thing people have. The last thing people want is having someone challenging their attitudes whilst watching Star Wars. But let's move on. To the fuckwit side of the fandom who are like, Rey is the best character ever and this will be a massive success and are failing to see the big picture, he won't be, are defending Charmin saying, why are people doubting her casting, I mean hiring, when she's a two-time Academy Award winner and has seven Emmys? Again, fair, but here's the behind the scenes from the hiring process that took place over at Disney. I think at the heart of everything, I am a storyteller and an activist. Not sure if all of you know this, but I'm not a trained filmmaker. You're in. Yeah. She indeed is an Academy Award winner for two short form documentaries about the inequalities against females in Pakistan. Both of them are 40 minutes long, I couldn't found how much they cost. Oh, and one of them is surrounded by controversy about Charmin not fulfilling her promises to one of the burn victims in her documentary who filed a lawsuit against her. But Disney knows about getting lawsuits from women all too well, so it's like she's part of the family already. Her going from directing short form documentaries and children animated flicks to a I'm just gonna guess here, 200 million dollar plus sci-fi action film that takes place in space with almost 50 years of fan base built around it, it's like having a professional ping pong player be selected to play in Wimbledon. It's a different racket, it's a different field, it's different fucking balls. These ones in particular are hanging from Kathleen Kennedy who continues to repeatedly shove them in the fandom's mouth. The worst part of all of this outside the fact that she is not trained in filmmaking, is that she is firmly an activist. She says that all the time. And everything she does has, in one way or another, a sample of her activism in it. My body of work, guided by my activism, every single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert. No one wants your activism. We want Star Wars back. 
So no matter what, we are gonna get a lecture in this. And by we, I mean men. How we have to change our way of thinking. How we have to be uncomfortable and look at the mirror and think really long and hard about our attitudes. Oh, don't attack her. The script is being written by a man. Yeah. You know what other Disney film was written by a man? And how did that turn out? That changes nothing, because the one moving the strings, and who personally select her, was Kathleen Kennedy. The entitlement that these women have, pretending they can walk into a franchise beloved by many and start telling people how they should think, is ridiculous. They can't have their heads any further up their own asses, because if they did, people wouldn't be able to hear the shit they constantly say. Which would actually be a good thing. Every time some dumbass female director came out saying that they chose a franchise for the sole purpose of sticking it to the men, it has led to the worst performing shows or movies that every fan hates and further increases the division within the fan base. Because all the smooth brains that defend anything with the word diversity or empowerment in it are still saying that Nia da Costa is a successful director. Because she made the most revenue in a movie for a colored woman after she directed the biggest flop in MCU history. Which was so bad, Marvel stopped reporting the numbers. No one said shit like this about the new Aquaman because it has a male lead. Yes, they did. That movie was doomed to fail from the start. Same as the Marvels, same as this one. Jason Momoa didn't give a shit about it, he just asked for more muscle padding in his suit. Aquaman 2 had an actress who literally shat in her partner's bed and still grossed more money. If social media has done anything for cinema, it's make everything you say or said cataclysmically more impactful so it doesn't matter when Charmin said that she enjoys making men uncomfortable or the context of why. The fact that she said it was enough to encourage people into wanting to boycott this movie. Whether or not that takes place, the damage is already done. No one else needs to say anything else for this movie's prospect to look absolutely dreadful. I don't think it even has a release date and people are already calling it a flop. Same ass. It's Hollywood, baby. Imagine if a man said that they enjoy making women feel uncomfortable. There's gonna be an interview or a clip in the upcoming future where the damage control from the PR department in Disney is gonna be so laughably evident, same as they try to do with Rachel. The difference is, it's gonna look extra forced because this woman is hardly set on her activist ways, and the only people who like activists are other activists. But the Star Wars brand is already tarnished. Further alienating the men is gonna accomplish nothing but perpetuate the failures the IP has already had, like Ahsoka, Kenobi, The Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, Solo, no one even watched that one, and Andor, which sadly was pretty decent. They've killed or disrespected every important male character in order to replace them with a female one, who don't even die when they get stabbed repeatedly with a lightsaber. And if Finn is even alive, he's stuck with Rose, which is a faith worse than death. Even Daisy Ridley was basically surprised into taking the role without even seeing a script, which is why Adam Driver refused to go back when they offer him the same. Good choice by him. Apparently there is a leaked script. I can't confirm 100% that it's true, where Rey is gonna be training two young students, a boy and a girl, the last one being the one who shows the most talent and grows to be a future leader. And I am guessing the boy will be the one who turns to the dark side out of jealousy. Why am I not surprised? There will be no door. Oh, the director of John Wick stated that he would be interested in directing a Star Wars movie, which would actually be super cool, because that would mean it would feature some really good fight sequences like the ones we had in the prequels. He has successful experience with high budget action films, but unfortunately he has some innate qualities that immediately disqualify him from working in Disney Star Wars. Firstly, the fact that he seems focused on delivering a quality product for the audience but mainly the fact that he's a dude. The new Jedi Order is gonna be an unplanned mess that perpetuates the flogging of the dead horse that used to be George Lucas' baby, which he unfortunately sold, 
to the white slavers that will deliver a message about gender politics or some shit like that no one wants to hear with a price tag on it of about 200 plus million dollars. But if you watched this far into the video, leave us a like, check out this video next. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite Star Wars movie outside the main nine, Rogue One. And as always, I've been Nacho, hoping you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.